welcome everybody to uh, episode one, the Archman Podcast. What's up, Dave? David Chicago. Oh, stop. And Clint Orris with you. Stop it. What are you talking about? No. Brian. That's my new my new uh, alias, David Chicago. Did you already drink a beer? Yeah. Hey. I was over here arguing with Kevin. Yeah, you guys are just having a great time. Well, everyone, welcome. Thanks for stopping by for another episode of the Orange Men Podcast. September 10th. 2021. A lot of significance in this weekend. Yeah, one day from the anniversary, the 20th anniversary of September 11th. Do you know so, what, uh, No, go ahead. All right, do you know? I, what I wanted to do was kind of just kind of remember back 20 years ago and get it. You know, get a sense of where you were, what you were doing, and, and what happened. Uh, me? Yeah, you. What, what was going on in your life during September 11, 2001? Uh, I was working. I was at work. Yeah, what, what, what kind of job were you I was doing? working at Lowe's Home Improvement. I was the receiving manager. Oh, really? And then as we were unloading trucks, one of the guys said that uh, one of the truck drivers came in and said, it's on the news that a plane hit the Twin Towers. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And then we turned the radio on and... Because, of course, we didn't have phones and stuff like that back <laughs> in early 2000. Well, you did, but it wasn't like it is now. And uh, we turned the radio on, and the news station was like, yeah, you know. They didn't say what kind of plane it was or whatever, and then they described the plane, and then the second plane hit, and then all hell kind of broke loose in the, in the world, in the country. I was a young man then. Yeah, yeah, so... Oh yeah, twenty years, twenty six years old. Had wow. life full of me, full of life. Yeah, you still had two. You still had two kids born. Only even born yet, only right? two kids. Wow. I was ready to go to the recruiting office later that day. Were you? I guess you could at twenty six. <laughs> yeah. I was. Uh, I happened. I was thirty six. I think. Oh. I had ten on you. Yeah. I was working for FedEx Home Delivery. Mm hmm. It was a division of FedEx Ground. I was a regional driver trainer, and I was on my way up the New Jersey Turnpike to heading to the Bronx Terminal to uh, train train a new group of drivers. And I get a and I'm listening to the Howard Stern show, who I'm I'm disgusted with, by the way. Well, we can get back on that. Yeah. Um, Why? Well, so anyway, I was listening to the Stern Show, heading up the Turnpike just before he hit satellite, and uh, and one of his callers calls in, I think, and said, "Oh, the World Trade Center is on fire." So I'm coming up the Turnpike and I'm passing the World Trade Center, and I've driven up to New York so many times that I stopped looking. Yeah. So I had no idea the thing was on fire. So I look over, and I'm like, "Holy shit, it is on fire!" So right after I look, the phone rings, and it's my wife. She goes, a plane flew into the World Trade Center. I'm like, no, hell out of here. So when she said that, I just assumed from where I was, I was yeah. kind of far away from the T Jersey Turnpike. Yeah. <clears throat> I just assumed it was like a biplane or something because the yeah, planes. Exa yeah, exactly. Because all a I saw little, was smoke. Yeah, I didn't. A little prop plane or, you know, a Cessna or something. Yeah, yeah, somebody, never. Somebody flew their little dumb private jet into it. Yeah, or some idiot. So I never really thought airline or anything so there was, I saw there was a bunch of people pulled over on the turnpike looking so I pulled over and I saw the second plane hit and again it was just like a little tiny thing hitting the building and then it poofed up again and then my wife was on the phone and she said oh my god oh my god another plane just hit the and I'm like what you know she said it was an airliner I couldn't believe it because from where I was it just looked like a little dot yeah Looked really small, so I'm thinking, holy shit, this is uh, this is crazy. Yeah. So they ended up shutting everything down, and I couldn't get into New York because right away that obviously everything got shut down. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up we had another building in Secaucus, so I ended up in Secaucus, and at that point the Jersey Turnpike was shut down in both directions, so I couldn't get home. So I kind of had to stay there, and it turned out that uh. My son, Kevin, Katie, you were, how old were you? Yeah, you were just a baby. But Kevin was in like second or third grade, and he knew I was going to New York that day. When he got to school, 
one of his teachers told him that New York was getting bombed. <laughs> and he freaked out. I guess my wife had to go to school and get him because he thought I was getting bombed. But I was in Secaucus watching the whole thing. Now, from Secaucus, you can see the trade centers out the building door where yeah. I was at. And then, you know, we were watching. I mean, the whole the whole place was just like everybody was just watching what was going on. And then, then they, the one tower came down, and then the other tower came down, and it was like silence in the room. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was crazy. And, and Katie sent me a thing today. You know, nobody, nobody liked what happened on September 11th, but they did like what happened on September 12th. Yes. America came together as one. Um, flags were sold out. Everybody was flying an American flag. We finally were one people. We had something to come together for. We focused on what brought us together, not what divides us. And the saddest part of this whole end of 20th anniversary is going to be Joe Biden <laughs> getting up there acting like he united this country when he is the worst, most disgusting human being on the planet. And the people that he deals with, works with, people that puppeteer him yeah. are disgusting. What they're going to do, I can tell you right now what they're going to do tomorrow. He has spent the past four years, him and people like him, four plus years, dividing this country, well, tearing people apart. It started back with Obama, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I know, but it, 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 you know, it really... Well, he was on, I'm just saying, because he was the vice president then, so... I yeah, mean, he, but it he, really he, came he, alive during the Trump presidency. Well, yeah. Well, because he was never supposed to win. But. Oh, man, this is good. <laughs> I went to the beer distributor today, and there was a guy out there doing taste tests. I got me some Trogues, Dream Weaver, German Wheat. Give it a try. I told the guy, give him a free plug. There it is. Make sure you uh, make sure you, you hit up the Trogues guy. Hit up the Trogues. Where's <laughs> Trogues at? Is Everybody, I think it's a Pennsylvania local. Uh, okay, so no one no one's getting it unless you order it. All well, no, nah, I mean it's 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 a it's a it's a big deal, but I think it's Pennsylvania area. Yeah, so I, it's just really sad that you know this country came together and now it's so divided over such dumb well, shit. Yeah, it is dumb, and that's the that's the worst part is that we're we're and you know we're fighting over. I mean, obviously, and they're not getting the push that they want, which is the worst part. And that's kind of what they were trying to do under Obama with the whole, you know, that's where Black Lives Matter started, this, this, and this. Like, they were trying to get the race wars <laughs> fired up then and then all through Trump's presidency, especially, you know, within the last 18 months and two years. They've really been pushing it. And then now we're at a new threshold of the vax against the unvaxed or the 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 you know, you know what i mean like right. they're just creating they keep creating this narrative of problems when it really isn't because again i don't care what color skin color you are i don't care if you wear a mask don't wear a mask get get the shot don't get the shot that shit right. doesn't matter to me leave me alone and let me live my life i don't yeah. need to be told listen when i got pe when i see people wearing hefty cinch sacks for a shirt because they can't fit in a, a into a regular shirt don't tell me about health when you're over there double fisting Twinkies and, and, and monster drinks, don't tell me about, well, you're making me unhealthy. Listen, uh, my, get out of here. I'm with you there. I mean, the people that are telling you to, to, to take this fax are, uh, I don't want to get into that right no, now. No, I, no. I wanted to stay with 9-11. No, I was, just, I was going with the division stuff. Yeah, I, I know. But they keep on pushing it. Yeah. And even, it's, like, it's sad and, and disgusting, and it's... I, I don't, to what what to what end game do you th what are they looking for? I mean, is this all about socialism and and Marxism and communism and fascism? Is this all about one world order? Is this all about government control? Is this all about power? Is it all about money? I, I, what, what is it all the above? It's the ruling class within the, the globalist <laughs> elitist people, and you know. It, well, what's funny? We fail to see it because we don't really look at it, and I mean, especially the the, the way social media is now is is it's, it's incredible because you have we see what's going on in Australia, we see what's going on in in Japan, we see what's going on in Brazil. Like you know what I mean? Like it's it's citizen journalists or people on the on the, on the streets that are do out there doing the work of right. 
which you wouldn't see on our news or any other news. Like, you know, like when I'm watching Sky News and I see Sky News clips on YouTube all the time or people send it to me on Instagram because like, hey man, here they are ragging on Joe Biden. Like, that's the only time you ever see anything negative or or or, or the only time you see the truth. <clears throat> yeah, whether it's the truth or not, but it's well, people think, like saying stuff. Yeah, but people have been so so in tune. I'm uh, not in tune. So accustomed to watching the regular news. Well, yeah. And that that can only be the but source it, of their. But it's like you said before. It's not. It's not the Walter Cronkites and the stuff. I mean, he, no, who I even know. knows if that was real back then? But we took it for what it was. Yeah, I don't know that there was a ton of opinion. Like the editorial in the newspaper was the only opinion section. Oh, it's the same. Like you know, you know now Tucker it's, Carlson. Now the, everybody. Now we're just getting people. Like opinions. all those people are doing. Basically, they're doing a podcast in front of on, on cable news channels all night long or every day. That's all they're doing. They're they have people write up their their shows for them. They put their opinion and their little spin on it and verbiage, and then it's like, oh, you got great ratings. But if they don't get great ratings, they're gone. It's just no. like. They're doing the same thing we're doing. They just have the voice and the platform to speak it. And people sit there every night saying, yeah, Rachel Maddow, you're you're fantastic. Or, yes, Chris Cuomo, you make sense. Yes, I mean, even Sean Hannity and those guys. Like, you know what I mean? They're, they, yeah, but it's all emotion-based. Yes. There's no facts. There's no evidence. Well, they got a little bit of fact in it, like we do. They're, they're spinning uh, fact with their opinions. Who? And, well, all of them. I don't know, man. I'm not seeing many facts. Well, maybe uh, those Fox guys, the CNN guys are just, <coughs> or whatever, the, the leftists. Well, the f- but even get, like, I don't know. But even, like, I remember listening to Stern back then, and he even said, like, he knew right, he, he knew day one who it was. And yeah. we had to figure it out. Like, I remember him saying, like, right away, it was, it was Osama bin Laden. I don't remember him saying him by name, but he did say terrorist wow. attack. No, but he knew, he's like, we know who it is. Because they knew. They knew who it was. I don't. I'm pretty sure he was like the first guy to say it, whether whether it was day one or <clears throat> or no. He's know, the the initial the initial week. He was the one of the first guys to say it. So I'm a bit louder because yes. when he's, they finally came out, with it, I was like, oh, it's weird. Well, I didn't even consider terrorist attack until I heard Howard Stern say it. Well, he found that passport. So I mean, how that? Well, happen? no, he said it after no, the second no, plane well, hit. He said it early. That was because he was actually. But but you know. He was either part of the PSYOP that's been going but on. But now for- he's part of the global elitist. Yes. I need my freedom and, back. And I'm, yeah, and I'm, I'm fuming. Because he was a guy I had a lot of respect for. Because he was, he, you know, the fights with the FCC. Yeah. Give me my freedom. Let me say what I'm not hurting nobody. Blah, blah, blah. The whole fucking nine yards. And I was on board with it. Forget all. about all the wacky other shit. Yeah, I mean, it was funny. I had a good idea. And, you know, I was a truck driver for a long time. Yeah, so you listened to him. <clears throat> yeah, it got me through the day. At least through the morning. At least through the morning. Well, he sometimes he was going on. Oh, yeah, until totally, yeah, eleven thirty. Yeah, 12, noon sometimes. Yeah. And then uh, Baba Booey used to hang in after and but do that's, a recap. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's another thing. Like it's just, I mean, maybe that was all part of the plan to suck all us, <laughs> us rubes in. Like, oh, yeah. this guy's showing TNA and telling fart jokes. And now it's like, hey, listen to me. Like, I, I don't even know who listens to him anymore. I mean, if you do, you do. But I haven't paid. Like you said, I mean, we kind of talked about yeah, it I'm earlier this morning. I, I haven't paid. I mean, I haven't listened to him since the first year he was on satellite, which I don't even remember how long, when it was. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, well, last year I had a free, like, three-month trial of satellite. Yeah. And, and I still didn't turn him on, so. I mean, we're, from what I understand, he works, like, three days a week, and he just talks bullshit. And, yeah. well, like, everybody he used to have on, he rails against. You know what I mean? Like, Donald Trump was probably one of his biggest biggest shows because he was in New York and he was a fantastic guy to have on. Now it's like, ah, fuck that. You know, he hates that guy. Come on. What are you doing? Are we serious? Yeah. All right. But even, like, w- with the whole, <clears throat> I mean, rounding back out, like, 20 years, like, I, you know, I remember, like, one of the reasons why I voted... Uh, to say against McCain was because I was like, yo, I don't want this war to go on. We need to end it. And you know what? It didn't end. And then I was like, well, I, one of the reasons why I wanted it because I, I didn't want to keep on staying in wars. And my son was only six. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess in 2008, my son was 11. And I'm like, yo. And here he is. He's yep. three years in the army. 
<laughs> while this while this war was supposed to be railing down, and here and it he's is. Shit face, waiting for a concert tonight. Yeah, he's, well, Toby Keith's playing down where he's at. So <laughs> he's supposed to have a free concert. Well, hopefully he makes it. I'm sure he will. But here it is. You know, he's 27 and or 20. Well, yeah, but Trump and Trump is also the first guy who who avoided the wars. No, no, I'm aware. I but I'm just know, saying, man. like here it was. I was hoping for him to avoid going into the military because of the wars, and here it is. We're supposed to be out of it, and who knows what's going to happen with this? I mean, they're going to ramp it back up and send troops back in there eventually. Well, probably. They're going to send the troops against us, the white supremacists. Oh. What, they, what else they call us? Oh. Or something. Just all right. Well, listen. I just wanted to talk about 9/11. Yeah, I'll go, go gracefully. Thanks, everybody. Remember yeah. Fallen, and uh, <clears throat> never forget that... Uh, never forget. The people that did the towers... What? Are... Were our enemies? Are our enemies? Sure. Well, I just want people to look back and remember, you know... Nine Twelve United. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, that's not mine. It's actually somebody's website. You sell, it's still a good one. Sells merchandise. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, we need to get back to that. And uh, I'm not sure how you do that. Uh, hopefully it's not well, this another is attack the, on this country. This might be the tipping point right here. This this lo- line drawn in the sand that was thrown out last night. This might be the one where everybody's like, yo, we, we got to stand together somehow, some way. All right, well, we, listen, we're going... Oh, no, no one's going to see this anyway, but we're going to go live tonight. I see this. No one's going to see this. Right, right. Until after we go live. I got you. So I can't promote it on this. All right. All right. We're going to get going. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Have a great evening and a nice weekend. Thanks, everybody. All right. It's okay to be American.